Hiya friends, Prepared Suburbanite back at you. Uh, today is Monday, the uh, uh, 19th of June, so I guess it's uh, Juneteenth and it's a federal holiday. So there's uh, no banks open, the stock market's closed, there's no postal delivery. So I guess we're supposed to enjoy this holiday. So <laughs> I'll wish you the well on that. Uh, yesterday was uh, Father's Day, and uh, believe me, we had a ball. The whole gang showed up here. We had a big cookout. Uh, so my two daughters, uh, four grandkids, my sister, her friend, and we just had a great, great time. Uh, it's always good to get together with the family and uh, to celebrate whatever day you got. So uh, it was my day yesterday for for Father's Day, and I'll tell you, there isn't any anything any better than being a dad of a bunch of great, great kids and a granddad of a whole bunch more even great kids. So thanks for the great time yesterday, and uh, all the well wishes. Uh, it was it was a truly remarkable day. Um, wanted to talk a little bit about um, my return video that I posted uh, a couple days ago. And uh, while I am just taken aback by all the very warm and wonderful comments from um, the viewers of that video, um, welcoming me back, glad to see you, boy we really missed you, all that kind of stuff. And it was um, encouraging to say the least. Um, and it certainly does overtake the uh, very rare negative comments that, that I get from time to time on this channel. But I'd like to share just a, a couple of thoughts from a YouTube creator. Um, being a subscriber to a person's channel um, doesn't cost a thing. And uh, because it doesn't cost a thing, I'm not sure why people don't just say, hey, you know, I like this uh, channel's content, um, I'd like to see more of it, so if I click subscribe, it'll show up in my feed a little bit more often. If I click that little bell icon, um, I, I can get notifications of new publications and new videos that pop up from time to time. But I was uh, kind of shocked at what I saw, so stick around. So here is what I saw. Of all the comments that I got, and there were well over 100, uh, probably close to 150 comments on that particular uh, video, the last one that I did, and they were all, all super positive, um, all that. But um, as a uh, uh, channel manager, I guess, um, the, the YouTube folks give us um, a glimpse into some of the background kind of stuff and they give us some statistics and they give us uh, uh, some icons that let us know what's going on, how many um, ups we get and how many, well not necessarily how many downs we get, but um, the, the, the comment, um, if you're a subscriber, the comments pop up um, with a little icon after your name that says, yeah, I'm a subscriber and I've been a subscriber for um, six months or two years or whatever it is. Uh, but there's this little red dot that kind of pops up on those comments. And of all those comments that I got on my return video that I did just last Friday, I think, 2.6% um, were actually from subscribers. That means over 97% of the people that commented on the video were not subscribers. And I just found it to be interesting or curious or something. Uh, so I'm not sure what uh, the motivational dynamic is there. But if you enjoy my videos, if you enjoy this perspective, if you enjoy just a regular old guy out in his backyard with a camera, uh, videotaping um, him uh, expounding on his thoughts, 
Um, if you like that kind of stuff, and if you think it's valuable, please click that subscribe button. It really makes a big difference for the overall viewership of the channel. So, with that said, you know, uh, uh, planning for a, uh, a video presentation that um, is going to have some interest to at least a few people anyway, um, you get all kinds of crazy thoughts in there. What are you going to do? What are you going to say? How are you going to say it? Oh, do you need to do some research to make sure that you're on, on the right track with whatever factual information that you're going to give? But one of the, one of the thoughts um, that I had that was kind of crazy but slipped through my head and I thought, well, maybe I should just kind of say, hey, I was in a coma for six months and boy, am I sure looking forward to grabbing a cold Bud Light and watching Tucker Carlson on Fox News. But anyway, I uh, digress. I thought it was a little funny. I'm not sure if you do, but um, the world has changed and it's changed significantly in the last six months. Um, I think we've lost our direction as a country and I'm very, very concerned about what this holds for us as conservatives, what this holds for us as uh, the prepared community. I am totally, totally concerned that we are um, diving off a cliff that we may never be able to uh, climb back up to the top again. Um, the stuff that's going on at Fox News, the stuff that's going on at uh, uh, Bud Light, the Target stores. Um, I even saw this morning that Yingling, which is one of my favorite brews, uh, has um, recently sponsored a what they call a family-friendly drag queen show. And, you know, I'm very disappointed in Yingling because, you know, their, their whole thing is we make great beer. And that's kind of their mantra. And because they've now slipped off that pedestal of um, just being good at what they do, good at brewing beer, um, getting into uh, sponsoring Drag Queen Story Hour for kids, um, just bugs the hell out of me. So um, what we'll see what uh, Yingling does. I don't think that Bud Light's ever going to come back. I think Target has lost enough market share right now to uh, hopefully make it reconsider some of its uh, earlier decisions about uh, some of the policies that they wish to expose and uh, wish to expound and force on us. I stopped going to Target years ago when they decided that, um, that they, all their stores were gun-free zones. And then um, a few years after that, well, maybe not, maybe a couple years after that, then they changed their bathroom policy that says that basically either sex can use both bathrooms and uh, all that kind of stuff. And I was a little concerned about that, and I thought, well. For me, that's too far. I'm not going to go back to Target ever again. And I haven't been. I drive by it every once in a while when I go to the, go to the big box stores like uh, Lowe's and Home Depot because uh, there's uh, pretty much a Target on every corner anymore. Um, but I just don't go back. And then their, their latest nonsense uh, with all this gay pride merchandise that they were trying to sell and then trying to hide and doing whatever they were doing, um, I'm sorry, I, I just can't ever consider um, any of that kind of stuff uh, ever again. So our, our choices as conservatives, our choices as, as folks that are uh, have a conviction about our fundamental beliefs, I think are um, really coming to the forefront right now, but it also definitely limits us on our choices anymore. There are restaurants that um, you just don't go to anymore because of their policies. There are um, retail shops and stores that you just don't deal with. Even Chick-fil-A now is uh, coming under 
a bunch of scrutiny about having a DEI um, kind of an executive and what they're doing and stuff. Um, if they open on Sundays, that'll be it for me. And the other concern that I've got, um, here in North Carolina, we just went through a, a short period at a time where the legislature was um, trying to uh, put together a, a foolproof bill to get it past our Democrat governor um, that would call for constitutional carry. And uh, they uh, put the bill together. It seemed like it had all the support in the world. But somewhere, somehow, somebody tripped over something and it never made it to the, to the vote in the legislature. And as such, uh, probably won't be revisited until sometime next year and that's a little too far away. But I've had a concealed uh, handgun permit, CHP, here in uh, North Carolina for oh, probably a good 10 years now. And the, um, the process that you gotta go through, um, I guess it's pretty standard for states that do um, permitting for uh, constitutional rights. Um, don't know why they haven't got into the First Amendment yet, but we'll see what uh, the future holds. Anyway, the Second Amendment, um, the way the Constitution's written, the, um, it's supposed to be uninfringible. Shall not be infringed is the words that appear in the Second Amendment. And apparently that doesn't mean much to anybody here in North Carolina with the exception of a few folks that uh, were really pushing hard to get this legislation passed. Well, it never made it to a vote. So, unfortunately, my concealed carry, uh, concealed handgun permit um, expired June 7th. And we were given um, a notification about 90 days before expiration from the sheriff's office and it said hey your your permits gonna expire um, soon so you uh, need to renew if you want to renew then within 60 days of the expiration you need to um, go through all the paperwork pay the fine pay the fee um, which was 75 bucks uh, each and my wife's got one too so that's 150 bucks for the privilege of carrying uh, your handgun in a concealed fashion. I went online, looked for uh, an appointment, grabbed what was <coughs> um, convenient and uh, uh, probably the most um, relevant date that I could get. So it was about three and a half weeks before expiration of my permit. So we made arrangements, made it to the sheriff's office. We had filled out the forms on online, paid the fees using our credit cards, <clears throat> showed up um, on time for our appointment, and filled out a couple of other uh, forms, gave them a, a self-addressed envelope so that they could mail the results. And what they've got to do now is, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, run a background check make sure everything's still okay and this renewal comes up every five years here so you got to do this every five years so did that but the girl said just as I was handing over the final pieces of paper to her she said well now it looks like your uh, um, current permits gonna expire on June 7th <clears throat> and that'll be that'll be it um, your new permit will take effect when you receive it but not before. So if there's a gap, deal with it. Today is uh, the 19th. My permit expired on June 7th, so legally I'm not allowed to carry my handgun in a concealed fashion anywhere in the state of North Carolina. Still waiting to hear. I suspect that within the next uh, 
week or two it'll show up in the mailbox if it doesn't then I uh, may have to make another trip to the sheriff's office to see if I can find out uh, what's going on and why there's a delay. I'm not sure if they found something troubling in my background check, that, uh, which I don't think they will, um, but do they have an obligation to tell me? I don't know, but I don't suspect they will. Anyway, um, don't let your rights be infringed. <laughs> Mine have been, and I am uh, kind of bent out of shape about how, um, how this has all turned out. So, things have changed. It's getting worse every time I look at what's going on in the environment. And I am totally disappointed in the direction that this country's going in. I'd like to hear your thoughts. If you think we're on the right track, or if you think we're heading off a cliff, you just let me know in the comments below. This is the Prepared Suburbanite reminding you to be prepared always, and I'll see you real soon.